we have Maryland legend, Baltimore basketball superstar, Mr. Ernie Graham. More importantly, the greatest dad you can ever ask for. Welcome to the show, my man. Thank you, my son. All right. <laughs> Great to be here with you. It's an honor to have you, my man. So we're going to get right into it. Uh, we saw a pretty impressive game last night from, from the Maryland Terrapins. They faced uh, Purdue, a top five team in the country, uh, number one team in the Big Ten by far. Um, everyone was expecting a close game, but Maryland came out and actually pretty dom pretty well dominated in the second half. Final score was uh, 60, 64 to, what was it, 64? 14 point. Game. 14 point win, yeah. yeah. So give me your thoughts on it. I mean, I thought you know, Jameer Young with 20 points, he's continuing to really dominate, especially at home during Big Ten play. Um, so tell me your thoughts on this team. Um, are you surprised? I know I am. I mean, I think a lot of people did not expect this from Maryland under, under first-year head coach Kevin Willard. But I can say they've more than pleasantly surprised a lot of people. You know, I'll say uh, because I was at the game that it was uh, it was exciting. Uh, Maryland's defense has picked up considerably. Um, they're scrappy. They they switch well. They they communicate well. Um, you know they got a few things they can work on that I saw, um, but for the most part, you could see that they were going to be in this game the whole time because they never lay down. When they got down, they came right back. Um, and then the second half, uh, it just seemed like they slowed down uh, the big fella, you know, because uh, Eby is just something, man. He is he's unsolvable. He's a huge human being. I got to stand over near him when he came out at halftime. Oh, and I said, wow, look at this guy. Uh, and uh, I can only imagine uh, what uh, Reese was feeling, or uh, Juju, out there uh, playing against a guy that big. They probably yeah. felt, felt what I felt when I was playing against A.J. Hammonds and Isaac Haas. So, like, there was a time where they had them both on the floor. Purdue, for some reason over the years, they always seem to find one of these giant, like, 7'2-plus centers, wherever they get them from wherever they're around the world. And Edie's the latest example, but the guy's a monster. He really can't be stopped. But I thought... The team defense overall was just incredible. They actually out-read it, re it um, Purdue, which I thought was a huge surprise. And that's how you win a lot of games, yeah. you, when you defend well and then you rebound as well. And they also shot the ball really well. Um, my thing with this team is that I knew they had the scoring talent. I knew they, they had the uh, – at times they have, like, what, four or five guys that can put the ball on the floor and make plays. Absolutely. And I was expecting I was expecting a lot from uh, Julian Reese just from what I saw last year. I think he's really picked it up over the past uh, six games especially. And um, he's showing why he's one of the better bigs in the Big Ten. And I think he has a bright future ahead of them as far as being a pro. But Maryland's got a lot of speed. They got a, they got playmakers. And the only the only my only concern with them was the size. I mean, I, I mean, me and you, me and you, have gone to a couple of games. We saw yes. the Illinois game. When, once Reese get, got in foul trouble, had to sit had to sit down for a while. Illinois really started pounding the ball inside. Yes. And, and we had a concern about that because we're thinking about guys like Zach Eady for Purdue. How they were, how they were going to exploit that had Reese got in foul trouble. Exactly. Um, he was able to do the play without fouling. Um, I think he had one foul at halftime, which I thought was great. Uh, Maryland only had 14 fouls uh, all the way going into the halftime. They they and um, and they were in the bonus. Yeah. And I I thought that uh, once Eb got his second foul, that um, Maryland would come out in the second half and have Juju attack him and draw one or two fouls and get him out of the game, but they didn't do that. Um, I didn't. Know. I didn't like. I didn't like some of the drives that he had in the second half to begin because they knew what, what he had. He had two fouls going in the halftime, so obviously yeah. you want to you want to keep that going and try to attack him. I thought the first couple of tries they had were just like they had no chance. Yeah. I mean, the guy the guy's seven four and he's got his arm stretched out. You're just shooting the ball right into his hand, exactly. making it easy for him. Mm -hmm. You know, I thought the first play was Julian Reese trying to back him in, back him in. That's not a smart play right now. Yeah. You want to, you want to, with that, with a big like that, you want to try to find an angle and get and get around him so he can and have, have to come in. across and lean in, yeah, and lean into yeah. it like you always lean told in. me. Yeah, <laughs> lean in two, you get two shots or two points that way every time. And if you do that two times early in the second half, he has to sit down. Yep. Or he has to stop playing defense. And without him on the floor, Purdue is just not that good. They're not. They're, not, not they're nowhere near the same team yeah. like what it's, we've seen all year. But when he's in there, they are difficult because you have to help on him because he's not just big, he's very skilled. Yeah. He can handle the ball. Uh, he has great footwork, and he's good court vision. He sees he's, he's his an guys. He's an, excellent, he's an excellent passer, and he has great touch around the rim, like exceptional touch. That, that's something that was very, yeah. They find the spots and set up and wait. And if you don't double him, he's going to get you. And if you do, he's still going to get you. He's just yeah. tough. Yeah, he's just tough. I mean, and – what I, what I didn't like defensively from the centers, they they did a lot of sitting behind Reese. I mean, behind on um, Zach Eady, and 
defensively, you don't want to just sit behind a guy like that because now you're just letting them easily turn and score. And, like, you got to make it a little difficult for him without fouling. Mm -hmm. So I thought that – I think going down the road, bigs need to learn how to kind of break contact and try to get on either side of him, pick an angle. Just make that, make that around, entry. The thing I taught you years ago. And it, he, it's the reason why I became a very good defensive player in the Big Ten because I didn't get buried a lot by a lot by. We had some great, we had some great, we had some great, we had some great bigs in, in, in the league when I was there too. So yes, I absolutely. couldn't afford to just sit behind and like let them do whatever they wanted. So but I think breaking contact and really like, trying to like make that entry pass a lot. Don't tougher. let them feel true, you. Get yep. around. Get on top of his arm. Knock it down. Get around. Absolutely. Keep working. Um, I, I was actually uh, talking to a friend of mine. Andy was at the game with me, right. and I was explaining to him how easy it was for Zach, I meant for Zeke, Zeke, Zach Eby, Eby. Zach Eby to get yeah. post position because they weren't even making contact with him. They let him just come down, walk around, go any way he wanted on in the post and set up. And then when, when they're behind him, he's so big and strong, you can't, you can't do anything with him. You got to bump him up top when he's coming down Make it tough for him to get on the box, and then when he does, you can't let him feel you. You got to get on the side, get on that right side, knock that arm down, get around, and make it tough for him. They didn't, yeah. um, but for some reason, he didn't dominate this game like he did in I thought, Purdue. I thought the team defense was was great on him differently. I thought they really like they were showing different looks, like they were kind of doubling with the with the off guard a little bit right. to kind of make him think about it. Mm -hmm. And I thought they got better pressure on the ball because that's the second part I wanted to get into. Part of like making a post entry pass, like you know, a lot tougher. Yeah, the post player has to get around and get either side. But the guy that's guarding the the, the guard the or whoever's out there with the pass, they got to pressure the ball. Yeah, they got to make them kind of like you know, make the pass a little bit, a little bit difficult. Mm -hmm. Get them further off the block because the closer you get to them, it's it's over. You have no shot at really stopping them without fouling. And this was a low turnover game too for Maryland. They only had eight turnovers the entire game. They played great, which I, which I thought was fantastic. Like, that's how you win games. You out rebound your opponent. You limit turnovers, and you shoot the ball as well as they were. And again, Jameer Young, he's been like a he's been a godsend for this program, I feel like. And Scott. Scott Dante played, Scott's been solid. Whenever they switched him, um, they called a couple uh tic tac fouls when he was pushing yeah. with uh Zach. You know, he wasn't letting him just back him down. Yeah. He was pushing pushing back, showing, you know, some resistance and they called a foul. I thought it was you know, it was kind of not absolutely necessary. What, this guy's so it, big. Wasn't it, wasn't what big, can you do? It's a big it's a it's a big ten too, man. Like, like, we you can't just let the guy just do whatever he wants to you. Like you got to have some kind of resistance and push back. Like so, I thought a couple of those fouls on Scott were obviously tic tac, like you just said. Mm -hmm. And um, I thought I thought he kind of started crying for fouls like down the stretch. And I feel like you know what? When I, once I saw that, I was like, they, they got, got him. him. You got him. They, yes, got, they got him. You already him. know that. Yeah. And uh, the other kid, Hart. Listen, Hakeem Hart. Yes, sir. Um, he's the heart of that team. To nope, be honest. No pun I mean, you got you got guys who are talented in different ways and have different contributions. Yep. But Hakeem is the one that brings that energy, you know, um, the smoke, if you want to call it. Second half, he just started hitting a couple threes and spinning and getting to the bucket. And when he start clapping and yelling and touching the floor, it's, 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 it's energy. It's contagious energy to spread throughout the entire team. And they all started full court pressing. Then coach switched to a zone. Which helped. They did a, a they, lot. Did a, they did a great job mixing up those coverages with, sure with them. They sure it, it threw the offense off at times. Like Braden Smith, they're 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 great freshman point guard. They I think for the first time I, I saw him seem kind of uncomfortable. He's rarely uncomfortable all season long. He can play, but uh, you know, Young and he and him were having conversations. Oh yeah, too, back and forth. Yeah. Uh, so um, I think that helped because it got him outside of his normal comfort comfort zone. You know, he wasn't able to just come out, set up, and do what he wanted. They yeah. were turning him, turning him, turning him, and then on the other end, they were attacking him and making him play defense and talking to him. And he really started rushing things, and and, and they didn't get set up throughout the course in, in their normal yeah. stuff throughout yeah. the course of the game. That where that's going to wear any player down, especially Absolutely. when it's that's when that's not in their normal like you know style of play. You yeah. can feel it though. I, I told my buddy, I said we're gonna get this game, and this was in right before halftime. I said, you know what? Every time they made their run, we made a run. We kept it close. I said, we're going to get them today. I believe not. I told him, I said, because Hart has not shown up yet. I yeah. said, and that guy is going to get some buckets. So look for him in the second half. And he sure didn't let me down. He he he, he turned it all the way up. You know, it was just a big, big win. This, this, has been, this, this team has just been, like, very impressive all season long. Again, 
I can speak for a lot of people who didn't expect this mm-hmm. from, a, from a first year head coach. We, we all think that, okay, it's first, first year new coach, you're going to struggle a little bit within the seasons to come, they'll do well. Me and you have gotten a chance to meet Coach Willard. Absolutely. We've both been very, very, very impressed, I would say. Yes. And just, you look at where, the, where this team is now, we're coming on mid February. March is around the corner, so March Madness is coming. Yes. How far do you see this team going in March Madness? Because right now, Joe Lenardi has them as a seven seed in, in, the, in the NCAA tournament, as we speak. Well, the seed is not as important as a team that's getting, that's trending in the right way. They're going up. Yep. They're getting better. At a perfect For time. instance, Purdue is starting to trend downward At the to worst lose time. the Northwestern and yep. then coming in and not just North, lose the Maryland. Northwestern is a good team though. They, they, yeah, they know, they're number but, two in the Big Ten. But, they, they're on the way to the tournament as well. But nah, <laughs> they looked invincible earlier in the season. They looked like they were the team that were going to win. They were going to win the, the national championship, and um, it was hands down. And now it seems like you know they've gotten figured out. Teams are now starting to uh, break them down. And Maryland has won some big games. Uh, they, yeah. they play big when it, when, in the big moments. Yeah. And as you know, from being in, in the Big Ten tournament, it's a big – every game is big. Even the, the regular season, all those games are big games. They all, they, all come so, back, they all come back once March hits. And some teams, the bright lights spook them. Yeah. Uh, that's what separates the good not teams from the great team, teams. Not this team. This team doesn't seem to uh, – they seem to feed off of it. Oh, yeah. The energy is just incredible. I loved it. And, and what this team – this team kind of reminds me of my, my final team with Maryland my senior year. Undefeated at home with them so far in the Big Ten. That's a right. big That's a big deal if you can take care of your home. Now oh, you got now you got, now you got to win on the road. You got to win it um, in, in neutral sites eventually. But it's big that they've continued to, to defend home. And they're, 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 they're stringing together some wins finally. Like you could see how good this team could be. Early on, they were a little inconsistent. They they dropped some games after winning one or two, mm-hmm. you know, losing to Rutgers, you know, teams like that. Who are, and again, this this this, this entire league I love is just like top to bottom. These guys are strong. Like yeah. the records don't mean anything. Any team is capable of beating any team at any point exactly. in time. And Maryland has shown has shown up, shown a lot of heart. And again, they're defending home. That's a big deal for me. Um, so it's just it's a matter of can they get out of that first weekend? So like for the past like. I want to say five to six years, like Maryland's made it to the tournament, but it's, it's been a struggle getting out of that first weekend. You win the first game, the NCAA tournament. Now you got the round of 32. I feel like this team has the ability to get to this, to at least on the second weekend. Absolutely. If I'm looking at it. And if they get some momentum, which they are having some now, yep. and keep that going, um, there's a spirit in March, uh, my goodness. And it's just certain teams that seem to grab onto it, and if they win the fans. People cheer for them from other schools. Um, they are a fun team to watch they are. because they get out and they run. They certainly they, are. They take those shots that people want to see. Yep. You know, nobody's uh, looking over their shoulders like, can I take this shot? Am I coming out the game? Guys, guys let them pray for you. They just playing. And Coach told us that. He said it's going to be a different style of basketball from what you're used to seeing. And he is absolutely right. They're, they're just, they're, 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 the speed is the speed is what jumps out to me. They're not, they're not again, they're not the biggest team in the Big Ten, but exactly. their speed is absolutely killing a lot of teams, and it wears them down. On when you both got, ends. Yeah, literally on both ends, because you can press them on the whole game with that speed, and on offense, it wears you down. It does. So I like, just want Juju to get a little bit more aggressive. That's our, that's our, that's our kid from Baltimore, man. We, we, we expect we expect more out of you because we see greatness in you, man. And you are a Baltimore guy, which means we're related. We see, we see greatness in you, my man. And there's a certain toughness that Baltimore basketball has been over my 45 years. Yes, sir. Actually, it's been longer than that. It's been 50 years yep. of playing basketball at a pretty good high level. And he has certain uh, skills you can see, but he's not actually using all of his stuff. You know, he's not looking for the shots. He's not taking guys to the bucket and finishing, he's he's bailing them out. You know, a couple of times he had a couple of close plays where he just turned around and faded back, you know. Yep. You got to go up strong. Definitely. Gotta he can shoot strong. free throws. He's, yeah. You know, he's pretty solid. Yeah. And if they get him going, now you got something. Because everybody else seems to be aggressive, maybe sometimes a little too aggressive. That's awesome. But 
You get him going like that, it's gonna be all right. You got, you got, you got some, you got a threat coming in the NCAA Absolutely. tournament. Absolutely, you got a threat there. Better watch out. <laughs> I think so, man. Hey, see, you no, know, the light is bright in College Park. I think the future is very bright. I think Kevin Willard, again, no one saw this coming this year, but he's coming and just actually infuse like a new type of juice that we haven't seen in a while. Right, and yeah. it's, it's it's great to see. You know, two longtime Maryland fans, also former players. Yes, we're, we're excited to see what's next. All right, yeah, we're going. So we're going to jump into the NBA a little bit now. Um, we had a crazy trade deadline on um, this past you know month or so, and a lot of activity that we didn't see coming. We got Kyrie Irving going to the Dallas Mavericks of all teams. We got Kevin Durant going to the Suns. Mm. Like, I don't. I don't this is it's just crazy that no one saw it coming. But like, it just it changed the balance of power. It feels like it's going back to the Western Conference because all season long, it was, everyone was talking about the East. You got Milwaukee. You got Boston. You got Philly. You had Brooklyn at the time. They, this, the talk of the, the NBA was more so who's gonna who's coming out of the East. Whoever wins the East is probably gonna win the NBA championship. Exactly. Now that we have all these crazy trades, where are you standing on like after, after on these teams? Who do you think is gonna meet in the finals now that the trades are over and done with for the season? For me, the East is still gonna be the strongest. I hear a lot of different uh, analysts um, saying that uh, Phoenix is gonna win, and, and and when Kyrie went to Dallas. They were going to make a run. Uh, the young Laker team looks pretty uh, interesting as I love, well. I love what I'm seeing from my Lakers. Uh, I think this is a fantastic trade. They got the rid of Clippers are yeah. such a, a disappointment to me. Uh, really? Because they they don't seem to have that knock them out killer instinct. It's just almost like they just go through the motions. They're just playing. Mm. Um, do you think a lot of that has to do with like the inconsistency with Kawhi Leonard being on and off the floor? Little. I'm sure of it, but you, it's so late in the year to not have that. Yeah. You know, they just don't seem to play exceptionally well together um, as a unit. Um, and uh, when you look at Boston, they've been together for a while. Yep. You know, they, they're poised. Even without their coach from last year, they are still performing at the same level. Um, and when you're that good and the coach doesn't really – change anything doesn't matter that lets you know that the machine is is well oiled and it's it's tuned up and it's ready to go so is milwaukee yeah. with Giannis and his company they've, they've quietly won 12 straight games but no one's really talking about them milwaukee's literally got riding on a 12 game winning streak going into the all-star break and they're sitting at number two in the east now philly on the other hand I think they dropped down a notch i don't think they are going to be in the uh, final conversation Simply because they don't have that third player, you know. I, I was here. I was I was watching the first take earlier today, and um, Tim Legler said this something interesting about James Harden. He said that James Harden was probably the biggest loser out of that Brooklyn deal because that was his last shot to get a legit to the last legit shot to get a championship. Exactly. How do you feel about that? I feel like he's absolutely right, and I just don't understand these new players and how they seem to want to jump around whenever it gets challenging. Whenever, and now I'm not talking about uh, challenging in terms of, of of being able to win or lose games, but when the teams, you know, you go through different phases during the year, you know, where you're playing great and you got periods where you're not playing great. Um, of course, Kyrie is a whole nother conversation yeah uh, and I'm sure it was tough to hang in there but when you commit to something you know <clears throat> when I was young uh, you know and I went to Maryland and things got tough um, lost more games the first month hmm. than I have ever lost in all my days of playing basketball Un undefeated in high school right she me Christmas no believe that and it's then been, it's never lost a game in high school guys <laughs> and then you come into uh, college and, and you only playing five minutes a game yeah. and you're losing, you know, um, most people would, would would leave. I wasn't playing. But what I was taught was you make a decision, you make it work. You yep. stick in there and you fight until the end. Of course, it took a whole year for me to start playing more time in the rotation. But every day in practice. I went after the guys, and I'm saying that to say that, you know, like guys like KD go from a team that beat you to join them. Um, that's a different breed 
of basketball guys. He, he got he got a lot of heat for that. You know, I mean, it took courage to do it. I, feel I like just don't understand how a guy that talented wouldn't take on the challenge. These guys got me. I'm going to work. See you next year. I'm coming for you. I often I often think about the 2010 when LeBron joined D Wade and Bosch after losing to Boston, and I just I can't I I can't escape that. I know it's a different type of flow. Like he didn't lose to Miami. He didn't join the Celtics when he lost to him. But that was unfair, to say the least. Which is it makes it too easy. Like Kevin not Durant, to not like, to put the work in. Is it like KD joining Curry, Thompson, on, Draymond? Like who, who, who's no one's stopping that. No man, then like, but then you yeah. don't have to go weight train and get strong like MJ did that when Detroit beat him up a couple of years. Uh, he saw, went to the last work. Dance. He yep. went in the weight room and he got strong. Yep. He didn't go join the Pistons and say, "Okay, you guys beat me up. I'm gonna play with y'all." No, you know, I mean, it's just it's it's a certain amount of self respect that's involved in taking that challenge, and you might not win that particular situation you might not yeah but you just don't quit on yourself in your city you stick with your guys now now does does this move to phoenix feel similar at all to like to golden state with katie yeah it's just even with even with all the turmoil and all, and all the garbage that was going on in brooklyn that we know about with Kyrie, with Kyrie being the center of that but also the organization as a whole they hired they fired their coach Kyrie's got Drama left and right. He's finally getting getting shipped out of there. Katie's left sitting there by himself. Like, well, damn. I had Kyrie. I had James Harden. I had my team. Now I'm sitting there by myself. That that one feel different. Son, I love it when I'm by myself. <laughs> Come on, y'all go with me. I got it. I mean, it's just the way you, you you approach things. To man, Chris Paul used to beat Kevin up, hitting him with all kind of cheap shots and his hips and I mean, it's, this was. Elbows, just terrible treatment, I thought, mm -hmm. when they played each other. Mm -hmm. And then you go and play with them? I mean, who does that? I, I mean, to me, to me, it looks like the landscape of the NBA now. I mean, you see superstars, whenever whenever they want to move, they just were crushed out and they seem to get what they want. Now, in the case of Kyrie... I don't think I don't think he wanted to go specifically to the Mavericks. I think he still wants to go to the Lakers, which is why I don't think he's going to sign a long term deal with that with Dallas once that right. season's over. And it brings it brings me into the Lakers, like because they made some like I said they made some great trades. They shipped out Russell Westbrook, who I thought never should have been on the team to begin with. Mm -hmm. Not saying that Russell Westbrook is not a Hall of Famer. He's he, he's going to be a Hall of Famer. He's a great player. Mm -hmm. I think there's rumors that he'll either sign with the Clippers or the Miami Heat. Right. I think those are two teams that would actually fit for him. Mm -hmm. But it just wasn't a good fit with LA because of who they had around him. Exactly. And it starts with. LeBron James. He needs the ball in his hand. He needs to drive to the basket to get himself going. He's not going to be a jump shooter to start the game. Exactly. Russell Westbrook, same deal. Anthony Davis, same deal. Now that they've moved those pieces out and they bring in D'Angelo Russell, who's a much better shooter and a good playmaker, you bring in Vanderbilt, you bring in Malik Beasley. These are guys that can shoot and are athletic. Mo Bamba comes in to take the minutes that Thomas Bryant once had. Right. Now, all of a sudden, your front court's a little more athletic mm -hmm. with him, Rui Hachimara, and now Anthony Davis, assuming that he stays on the floor. That's a huge key there. Obviously, it's been a question mark for, for the past few years. Exactly. How do you feel about this new Laker team? Have you gotten a chance to look at them? I have. And I got to watch them without LeBron on the floor. Mm -hmm. uh, Against Golden State. And they they have a uh, very high-energy athletic team now. Yep. Guys get up and down the floor. They get after it. My concern was, is LeBron going to come in and slow everything down? Because... His game and his mindset is slow it down. Let me bring it up. Let me LeBron, coordinate everything. LeBron's thirty years. LeBron is thirty years old now, leading the team in three different categories: points, rebounds, and assists. He's even leading them in blocks. This is, this is him at thirty-eight years old. He's not going to be running up and down fast pace like he would at twenty-eight. He's not going to win then. So yeah, you, your, your point with the pace is he going to adapt to what these. D'Angelo Russell and the Lakers want to do because I think their best offense is getting out on, on fast break and getting teams on their heels as opposed to getting back on set defense because again they come, going into the season they were not going to be a good three point shooting team it was it was literally exposed the first night of the season when they played Golden State right. like it was evident they had no shooting on the floor Right now they got a little more shooting on the floor do you think the shooting the better shooting they have will kind of help if they get in these half court situations where they can't get out in transition or do you think transition is still their best offense 
but the game has changed so much that uh, if you look at Dallas with Luka, same problem. You know, too much uh, ball dominance by one guy um, slows down other guys' ability to create their own shots. So my, my retort to that is that with Dallas, you look at the team like it's it's Luka or nothing. They really didn't have anybody that really was going to stand out and give you like twenty points a night. Now nothing. you got now you got it with Kyrie, but before that. Like if you watch if you watch Dallas, I got to look at was that. pretty good. Uh, yeah, he was solid, but he ain't no Kyrie Irving. No, 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 you know no, no. Not to say he's a Kyrie Irving, but he's a twenty point a night guy. He, he he's on the cusp of it, but it's like if I I've, I've seen Dallas a few times, and it's like Luca can't get a drink of water. He can't go to the bench and chill out before the game. Either spirals out of control, or they got to put him back in there because it's a close game, and they're not confident in, in their guys. Because this is after Jalen Brunson was shipped out, which I thought was big. I'm like Jalen Brunson was kind of that glue guy that kind of settled things. Took it Luka, out of his hands. Yeah, and take the ball out and let, let Luca rest a little bit. But now he's in New York and he's playing great, by the way. I think he's playing all star level. Why do you think that is? Why do you think he's playing better in New York? He got, he got the ball in his hands now. It's no, it's no Luca Doncic. And there's a whole bunch of other guys in the league <laughs> yeah. on teams like the Lakers, like Dallas, we see, we see who it. you won't see their creativity or their skills at the highest level because it's being controlled yep. by the one guy. Uh, I just don't. And I don't like it. Um, and we've seen it, like especially with the Lakers. Like you think about Lonzo Ball, Julius Randle, Jordan Clarkson, D'Angelo Russell. These guys were all on the Lakers. Cool. What's the kid in uh, 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 New Orleans? Uh, Brandon Ingram, another one. Man, they had so they are all, many they're talented all playing, young. They're players all playing All Star level. They're playing great. None of them. They were all Lakers. Were happy <laughs> campers in L.A. Who doesn't want to be on the Lakers? That was the showtime. Running gun, team to play on, and then you 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 dismantle all of that and bring in like. Now they did it. Now they did it to get a championship. Now, now they done. The but same that was a bubble them. championship. That wasn't a regular. Uh, you know, I I don't. You don't feel you don't feel like it was harder based on like the circumstances. Like look, they it was, they there were no fans. You in one secluded location, basically isolated from the world for like the next two three months. You don't think mentally that would be a little bit tougher? Which is probably why they won. They had the most um, strongest mental <laughs> basketball player in the world, LeBron. I'll give you that. So, and I was and I was against that too, saying this is the bubble championship. But now when I think about it, spending time like that in a state where but it's that like traveling and that wear and tear east to west that was, coast. That was the trade off. The travel was the trade off, but you put them in one isolated, you know, situation. But that's like being in some in camp almost. Yeah. Um, it's 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 just not the same. Um, and at this point, you know, as soon as it was over, they fell into, what, 12th place? That's what we're seeing now. The Lakers are currently in 13th place right now in the West. And this is the result of the regular scheduled program going on. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a different team, though, man. Like, there's no there's no Ray John Rondo. There's no Caldwell Pope. There's no Why would you Dwight, let Dwight Howard. go like, let... of all of the talent, all of the talent that you had? Even the young man they just let go of. T- it. Taylor Horton Bryant, Tucker. Bryant. Thomas Bryant, yeah. Playing great. They brought, him, great. they brought him Obama. I think I think he's been solid for the first for the first few games. Yeah, but Brian had established something, man. He looked really good. Yeah, um and then I agree. Again, Carwell Pope, who can shoot. He's killed he's, he's killing it for Denver right now. Number one and team in the West. And you took him off of your team to bring in who? He was part of the, he was part of the deal when um Marcus Saul came in and then Montrezl Harrell. And I was wrong about this one. Like I thought that Gasol and Harrell would actually make them better on offense as opposed to just to having Dwight Howard who was a great defensive big, but offensively they was a little limited. I thought Gasol would bring more offense than them, but they just got horrible defensively. Exactly. And with Montrezl Harrell, that was a shock to me because I'm like, that's what you're known for. You're known for, you're known for your energy and your defense. Right. But they were terrible that year with them. So that then they, they shipped them out the next year, actually, both mm-hmm. he and Gasol. So, I don't know. Lakers, I've been a Laker guy since the, back in the Magic Johnson days. Played my style of basketball. I loved it. Um, and now sometimes it's just tough to watch, especially they come on late. Yeah, it's, it's always know, late, man. So you got to stay up to see it, but you got to give me something. Nah, absolutely. <laughs> you want to keep me up, yeah, you got to give me something. <laughs> I, I agree. You know, so uh, like Golden State, you know, they, they give you something to watch. You know, you know they're going to be exciting. Uh, they've been they've been kind of floating around, really trying to like keep them keep their season afloat. Curry's been in and out with a few injuries. 
Do you think they still have enough for the taste to get back to the finals, or do you think this is the end? I think when they let go of the big young fellow, uh, James Wiseman, is Wiseman, I think they blew it. I really do. I think it, they blew it. There's been there's been stuff about Wiseman like that he just hasn't really developed the way they hoped. Like he's they've sent him down to G League for a few times, which I thought was surprising, yeah. and now this move to go to Detroit. That really like I was just look like, how yeah. small they are. You can't. Yeah. You, you, no rim protection. All you got, all you got now is Kevon Looney, and then Draymond slides inside into that center. So Draymond is six six, maybe. Stretch him. Maybe. Looney is what six ten, maybe. Something, something like that. But, you know, in the playoffs, it's a different game. Yep. And you have to have consistency in different positions. Um, I think uh, McGee. I, why didn't let him go? He was, he's a even when he was with Golden State. He looked great running right. up and down the floor, catching those lobs, dunking, yep. blocking shots. Yep. Take, you know, a, a guy like him who doesn't cost you a whole lot. Yeah. Why didn't you keep him? That's a good. That's a good question. It's a lot, a lot of like just questionable like moves from certain teams, even the Clippers. The Clippers like shipped out Reggie Jackson. They shipped out John Wall. Well, shipped John out, Wall shipped out, shipped out Luke Kennard. Okay. Shipped out Luke Kennard. Like that, you you shipped out like all your all your guards. Yeah. Now you bring in Bones Highland from Denver, but is that enough for your depth to really make a run at at the finals? Cause a lot of people had a lot of people like at the beginning of the season before anything happened. They had the they had the Golden State Warriors going back to the Western Conference Finals right. to run into the Clippers, who who a lot of, many people thought that was a team that was put together perfectly to take them down. Exactly. You got two elite, you got two elite wing defenders in Kawhi Leonard and Paul George. Yeah, you got you, you supposedly you supposedly add more talent with John Wall, and now you, you got Zubas back there. You got a, you got a decent bench with Nicholas Batum. And Zubas was with the Lakers. Yep, that's and another, look how great another, he's playing. Another that's one with the Lakers. So. I mean, it makes you wonder uh, what in the world is going on with the NBA these days. You know, the players seem to be running the league. And Adam Silver recently put out put out a statement recently about um the mo- the amount of movement that was going on with players. Like he he's, he expressed like his displeasure with it actually. So it says the players are bullying the refs too much, and there's and it seems that like the demand for movement. Is getting to be too much, and it's now trickled down to college. You can't even oh, yeah. coach a player the trans- before they go in that transfer portal, and it is officially a business. somewhere else, and so it makes it tough to to coach players because if you don't appease them, they leave. The reality is, everyone can't be happy, and it's like you can't transfer as soon as things go bad. I but that's at, been the new norm. Yeah, I go back. I go back to Jalen Hurts, who just got finished playing in the Super Bowl. This man was lost his job to Tua Tagovailoa in the national championship at Alabama. Right. He didn't leave right away. He stayed. And Tua got hurt in one, one game. It was a very important game for them. Mm-hmm. Hurt stepped in and won the game for him. Right. And then he got rewarded by being a grad transfer to Oklahoma right. and worked his way into what we see him now. Now, he, now he's looked at as a top quarterback in the NFL. Absolutely. So I think that's an example of, like, look, you can't just, you can't just run as soon as things go back. No, you got, I mean, it, it just speaks to character, I think. Um, and you learn more – through adversity than you do when things are going your way. Yes, sir. You know, um, so my hat's off to a guy like Giannis who stood the test, put the work in, stay, won stay, the stay, ship, stay, stay and shot 17 for 18 free throws, something miraculous like that. And I think uh, the spirit of God was with him because he's never shot that good before or since. But man, like they were, they were, they were, count, they, were they were playoff games. Rewarded. They were playoff games. They were literally counting. Fans were counting because it's, there's a, it's supposedly a ten second rule with the NBA yeah, when the free throw yeah. line supposed to be. I don't yeah. think it's always t- um, taking it taken seriously, but they were counting one to ten when he was at the free throw line, and he still airballed it. You to say with it, yeah. And he's and he's got he's got rewarded, and uh, he's one of I think he's one of the more popular players in the NBA because he decided to stay with Milwaukee, and they built around him. And they he plays him. hard. He doesn't cheat you. He doesn't plays hard you. on every play. Yep. He's coming. And um, there's not a lot of guys like that yep. anymore. Uh, as okay. soon as it gets tough, well, I want to go play with my with my friends. Um, I want to go play with the team that just beat me. You know, I want to go play where it's going to be easy for me. Um, because, like, I, Kevin Durant is from our state of Maryland, and that's great. Mm-hmm. But he hasn't got – his body is not showing any change since he's been in the league. I mean, he couldn't bench 120 pounds, 125 pounds. He I don't believe he still can. At the combine, like, I, don't, I think he got 185 once, if that. 
But my point is, like it, yeah. you look at the difference in the frame. In fact, me and your mother was talking about it the other day, uh, and she was saying that Kevin doesn't have the frame Giannis has. I said, he doesn't have the frame work that Giannis has. Giannis... You, you work and yeah. build his you, body up. You, you look at his rookie picture compared to now; it's a total transformation. He, he that's work. Yeah. And in, in this summer, you if you want to be great, you got to put the work in. You can't just. I mean, you got. I know you make a lot of money, but, but guess what? You're only gonna play for so many years, right? Yeah. And if you're not committed to that, what you look at a guy like LeBron, who's been able to, his sustainability and um, being able to play this level is over a million incre- dollars into. His training, I his know. nutrition. I want to know what his is. training. I want to know what his training regimen is. I want to know what this man uses to like to put like to take care of his body. Because is this? You're not supposed to do this at age 38. It's, it's what his sustained greatness has been incredible. We haven't seen them like that. Not from not from one player. Right. Great. He, well, Brady in football. I, yeah, outside of Brady, like this, and he and thankfully, knock on wood, like he's avoided that one serious injury that totally changes everything. That we and saw. And I think that we because saw he's so strong. Yep. And solid. Um, it's hard to 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 hurt that guys that are, are like uh, Davis, Anthony Davis. Had, had a hard, know, hard time staying on the floor, man. But he's not. You can see he's not training like he could. You know, he needs to build his legs and his muscles around his his extremities. You They're, know, yeah. arms and legs. So that you you are attacking people when people are not attacking you, you know they bounce off instead of you bouncing off. You know every time you look up, he's falling. And then and, you, and then like, you wonder, it's like, is he going to get back up? Can he? Exactly. Can he is, is he all right? Like, and there's rumors. There's rumors swirling around now. I'm not sure how, how real this is. I don't think it's going to happen. But there have been some rumors that the Lakers and LeBron have not been happy with Anthony Davis. They want to trade him, and Dallas has been rumored to have interest. Now, but they now don't have anything to give him. With Ty, well, with Ty, Kyrie. But, yeah, with Ty, but that's okay. what, it's hot to Kyrie, you know what I'm saying? Good. But now they got a chance to get Kyrie without having to trade anything. Right. And then you trade Anthony Davis, you get some picks back, and maybe a player or two from Dallas. Dallas gets, gets what they want, but the mm-hmm. Lakers get their their man who they really want is Kyrie right. and potentially can have some draft picks to build around that that guy core because we have you seen Kyrie's able to play with a guy like LeBron. Kyrie's, Kyrie's able to play with a guy like Luka because Luka's style of play is very similar to LeBron. It's a slow pace and it's kind of ball dominant. But Kyrie's showing that he's been able to play off of that, which is why I think I Dallas, haven't seen them two on the floor together yet. You? It's they've gotten off to a slow start. I've, I've seen one game mm-hmm. now. When when Kyrie got there, Luca was was hurt. Was he wasn't hurt. playing, yeah, and then and Luca came back. They played the game together. Now Kyrie had a back issue the other night, so that's going to take time for them like to kind of get themselves together. But mm-hmm. I think that once they gel, I think Kyrie's going to be able to flourish because again, Luca his pace pace and usage rate reminds me of what what LeBron does. Even you even at this point in his career. That worries me. But he's not in the kind of physical shape LeBron no. is in. So no, not his even close. Usage rate is going to wear him down. Yeah, in the playoffs. Because he's just a chubby kid, you know, good weight can, can play and, and a whole bunch of skills. Can play though. Yeah. Imagine if he put that work in. Forget about it. Get them legs and that little forget, forget chubby about stuff it. off of him. MVP. Over with. MVP. But does he really want it? I mean, you never know. Yeah. With these new guys, you just never know. Last year, I wanted the Lakers to really just blow everything up and then go out and get Lamelo Ball from Charlotte. I doubt that he wants to stay in Charlotte long term, and he's from he's from Cali. Yeah, he would love to be the superstar of the Lakers. I'm sure, mm-hmm. and I think that should still be on the table because at some point LeBron is going to retire or go play with his son. I hope he gets to do that. Um, it's been, it's recently that Bronny um, is going to play with the U.S. Um, summit team, so he's going to get some looks. He's the last one. He's the last commit that hasn't committed to a college yet. It's going to be interesting to see where he goes. I think it'll probably be Ohio State. Can he go to a G League team for he, one year? G, G League is, one of those G League is out there. G League is out there as well. That's the that's the option. But the rumor is that he will probably come to Ohio State and they'll probably play one year and try to get there and so he can play with his dad. So okay, I got. I haven't seen him. I mean, a little I, bit I some pieces. Yeah, I just, I don't see. I've seen bits and pieces. Like he's 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 a, he's a little he's undersized for like a two guard, so to speak. His three point shooting is okay, but it's not quite there. I think his younger brother Bryce is a much better shooter. Mm-hmm. I've gotten to see him a little bit. Yeah. Bronny's got Bronny's got all the strength and the athleticism and the driving ability as opposed to Bryce, but I think the last piece of him is like really getting that shot together so he can be a, a, a triple threat on mm-hmm. all levels of the floor. Okay, staying staying on LeBron, as as we know, he recently passed Kareem Abdul-Jabbar to um, become the NBA's all-time leading scorer. It's a record that stood for nearly forty years. We, honestly, we never thought it would get broken, but we were all here to witness it the other night. Um, LeBron's, LeBron's gonna be honored at the All-Star Game for breaking it. 
it's risen even more the GOAT debate with Michael Jordan, who turned 60 today. Happy, board, happy birthday, Michael Jordan. MJ. Yeah. That's my guy. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, it's kind of like a raise that, um, those conversations again. You know where I stand. There's Man. no conversation to me. Edu um, edu tell them why. <laughs> well, several reasons. Um, just the ability to attack. People. He was like Bruce Lee was in karate. He was just a, a different kind of animal. Uh, vicious. Just, you could, you couldn't even trap him. He was so skilled, you know. Um, he just, to me, in a short amount of time, did so much that, you know, like even with the uh, all-time greats, I mean, you know, at Maryland is a 44-point record that I hold. But with the three point shots, yeah, guys, just off me that this man scored forty four points in twenty five minutes of play. There was no three point line during this time of the college basketball. It's a record that still stands today. It's right here on his jersey. Forty four points. How about this man? Forty four years. But my my thing is, um, I think they should take old records and and and, and let them stay uh, when they change the sport, meaning adding threes and different. I mean. I'm I'm happy for LeBron. And, the, and Kareem wasn't in a three-point shooter. He did all this. At all. Like, he, he was in the so paint. So it's another whole yeah, that's dimension. A, and yeah. then you look at uh, what did Mike play 20 years? You know, uh, just, I mean. Two, two three-peats in the, while in the middle of taking off to go play a whole other sport, which is a different kind of training. Yeah. And it changes your body. Like you, Baseball training is not basketball training. Exactly. Like football training is different. Right. This man had to reconstruct his body after coming back from baseball and, and won three more championships more. in a row. Exactly. And <laughs> when you when you measure to me the the skill set, like LeBron has gotten better, jump shot, a lot better now, three ball, a lot better. But when you look at their jump shots and their skill set, it's not the, it's no comparison. It's just n it's no skill set comparison. I get I get a lot of I get a lot of stuff about LeBron's stats, like you know, oh he's been to the finals ten times, like he's going to going to be the all time in assists. He just top five in assists. He got all these he rebounds. He scores. I'm like, yo, you're giving me stats right now. What's the stat? Is he playing in the last game? Get the eye test. Is he playing in the last game? Like look. show some of his best stuff, and show MJ's some of his best stuff, and see. The difference. There's a difference. Now, stockpiling statistics, some guys know how to do that. MJ was about winning. He wasn't worrying about stuffing those stats or that's the and that's that's the be, thing that that's the yeah, thing that bothers me the most is that such we don't care we don't care about winning anymore. We just care about stats. That's that's the that's the message that I'm getting is that you don't care about winning. You care about stats. And this man is this man has lost money. He's lost six championships. Six. So I'm going to put the guy that lost six championships over the man that won six and never lost a championship. Because he refused to lose. Come on, man. His 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 whole approach to the game was just so different that uh, Kobe might be the closest. And I can't even put I can't even put Kobe over Jordan. That's, that's I wouldn't put him over him, but the closest yeah. in comparison to the skill set and the and the ability that they both seem to possess yeah. uh, uh, physically, like they weren't like uh, LeBron. They the game is so now you can't touch anybody you know you, you you got a big six nine six eight two hundred and eighty pound point guard yeah essentially it's just you can't foul him you can't push him you can't hand check you can't, you can't breathe you on can't him. double team <laughs> double like team. there was no such hard, thing yeah. as a zone I mean a uh, technical foul Def defensive three defense. seconds yeah there was no such thing. Mm -hmm. And they've changed the rules so much for the offensive players to be able to score more points. Because that, that's what sells. How can you compare it? You can't. I mean, in all honesty, it's just unfair to me. But kudos to him and all of the uh, things that he does great um, and well. But there's just uh, there's different timelines, uh, different struggles. It was hard back then. Yeah. Yeah. I and I have no idea. I have no idea what it was like to play in that era. Obviously, you have a much better idea than I do. Exactly. I don't. I don't like bringing in eras because LeBron has the body type and the physique to handle, so to speak, the the tough foul and like that the bad boy Pistons did with Jordan. The way the way that you don't think so. No. 
Because he couldn't shoot free throws too good. He cries a lot. I don't like that. You know? I mean, go through him. You know, you, yeah, he's, he's like the strong. other day he's against strong, Boston, he's, right? He's, he's he goes strong, to man. the basket. He beats. He did get fouled by But two. his right hand, I always tell you, how many times MJ used his left hand? Not that much. Because it's about finishing. Yep. You beat him. And you. Now my left, you, my left hand, my left have, hand got to be some buckets. You now. got good left hand. Yeah. But I'm telling you that LeBron had him beat until he put it in his left hand. But he definitely, like, he definitely got fouled. Like, you got, I'm not they, saying they, 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 they blew that one. Yeah. And like I think that rep definitely got reprimanded because you blew a call on LeBron more so than just anybody. Yeah. At the end of the game, you going you gonna hear some heat from that, especially. Imagine what, what the difference would have been if the game went into overtime and they missed the call on MJ. What do you think would have happened to Boston? See what I mean? The difference. Yeah. He would have probably told everybody on the team, look. Get out of the way. I got to deal with this. You know, it's a difference mentally. It's just little It's just little bits and pieces that I see. It ain't got nothing to do with basketball sometimes. It's the mindset. Yeah. I can remember when LeBron was going to the finals with the Cavaliers against Golden State. I don't know if you remember this, but I remember seeing a, a, a press conference after they won the Eastern Conference. They asked LeBron how they felt about going up against the Warriors. And he basically conceded defeat. Right, right, he was like, right. He was like, I don't think, basically we're not going to win. That's what, his, that's what his body language said. You got to be kidding me. Now, the excuses are what tick me off because they want to like, well, it was unfair. They had Kevin Durant. Like, so that Cavaliers team didn't have a shot. They didn't match up. You got Kyrie versus Steph, JR versus Clay, LeBron versus KD, K Love versus Draymond, Tristan Thompson versus Pachulia, whoever. whoever. Like, whoever. That ain't a fair matchup to you from the starting lineup? Well, well one was their bench. They had, a, they had a better bench. I'll give you that. You got to say, but they said I it was so, am... they said it was so unfair that. They don't. They don't want to. They don't want to count San Antonio when he got swept. They don't want to count Golden State when they swept them again after they traded all those guys. In Dallas. Yeah, Dallas. They don't want to count that. Like, come on, man. Like, you're making all these excuses trying to like you know, up elevate into a guy who never needed an excuse. You know what I think part of the reason is, and this is my personal feelings. MJ didn't let the NBA use his name and likeness as much to promote that. Mm -hmm. And I think they wanted him out of the way. So they made it mm. the king mm. before the king earned the king crown. <laughs> um, they opened the pathway up. They changed the rules. They did a lot of stuff that, that 2016, wasn't that, that necessary. 20, that 2016 championship where they suspended Draymond. See, things that, mm. to me... Uh, mm. It was a it was a lot of uh, little things that most people probably don't pay attention to. I did, but uh, that takes nothing away from him. Yeah, that's the thing. Like I got nothing but respect for yeah. what he's accomplished. He's one of, he's the, one of the greatest of guy he is because yeah. you know he's 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 never gotten in any mess. Absolutely, on or off the court, he's been. Um, you can see that he he in, he has invested in himself yep. um, and his friends. He brought his teammates up from high school. He's put them in position to do great things. He's one of the greatest stories, like in, completely in, in, in the history around, of all the way around. Yeah. Uh, but individually, MJ just we talking about just skill and basketball. We talking about basketball. There's no comparison. Just none. You you heard it from me. You heard it from Mr. Ernie Graham, Michael Jordan, the greatest player of all time. LeBron. No knock against you. No knock against your fans. You just ain't that guy. Doesn't mean you want the greatest of all time. This has been fun. I really, yes, really, really, I, I'm so glad you asked me to come down, man. I've been looking forward to it. Yeah, and you, and you may not, you may not remember this, but yesterday during that um, Maryland Purdue game, officially made it ten years ago from this day that your jersey got retired, and I, all these years I, 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 I waited to, for that, to be there for that day. Ironically, I was at Penn State playing against Iowa. And Coach Sherman Dillard, an assistant coach for Iowa, yeah. text texted you guys letting you know, like, hey, your you son, your son, your son just beat us. Yeah, you didn't <laughs> miss a shot. Yeah, made all your free throws and all your field goals yep. that day. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was one of my better games that I remember. And um, it was awesome because it was the same night that my hero finally got his jersey hung down. And that was something that I wanted ever since I was eight years old. I wanted to go to Maryland to try to, like, you know, do something where I could get our name hung up. I came close. Didn't quite hit 44, but I still got to put the jersey on. And um, I got to tell you, one of the greater honors of my life is being able to don this jersey and this this number in your honor, and it means the world to me. 
And again, you want to just, uh, I can't say enough about you, man. You're my hero. I revere you. My man. So thank you so much for coming on to man, the show. Man, I love you so much, boy. Love you too, man. <laughs> love you too. It's all right, man. We'll be right back with some more. I'm going to get into it about a few things Miss Amber Rose had to say and a little bit of a controversy surrounding Chris Brown as, as he gets set to debut a new song with Chloe. Again, it's been fun. Mr. Ernie Graham is joining the show. I want to thank you again for coming. We'll be back after, after a few minutes. It's Club JG.